so the two quotes, a camera does not make a great picture no more than a typewriter makes a great novel, and the camera is an instrument that teaches people to see without a camera. Now briefly, I want each one of you to tell me something about yourself and why did you find yourself in this class called Light Vision of Art. Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie. Um, I am married. I've been married 27 years. I have two grown boys, one 19, one's almost 22. And so I usually have a, a full load of everything and, and uh, I've always wanted to do this. And I'm the one known at home with the camera. I'm always carrying the camera, always. And uh, as you mentioned, I love teaching. Uh, right now, I'm uh, reading interventions. So I've taught the creative writing, different writing courses. And I integrate writing with all my classes. I feel like it's really important. I always tell my kids that everybody has a story to share. You can trust me. I, I did um, for four years of the Plain Christian Academy. Oh, I'm at the hospital. Now I teach K through eight. That's the second time in two days that I've heard that school. Really? <laughs> well, second, I, I met a young man who graduated from there. Really? I was thinking about where to go to college. He's a bagger at Publix. And, well, and I was at McLean. Very good, Debbie. Thank you. Hello, Leonard. Leonard I'm a retired electrical engineer for the Mobile Company. Been in Lebanon uh, most of my life since I've been travel. <coughs> Just came back from out west. And you see the sky different than we see it here because it's not around the city in Arizona. But uh, Blake wife was a photographer and she could see what I couldn't see. She developed her own pictures. So, I have a friend on a motorcycle when we go west. She takes all the pictures. I just wanted to learn to see without a camera. Right, right. Like it's the cool. quote, teaching you see without a ca camera. Good, good, yeah, good job, Leonard. Like I told her, that's why I'm here. Very good, very good. And Bonnie. Well, I'm a damn Yankee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have two very grown daughters because I have grown grandsons and two other smaller ones. We've had a lot of disaster and trauma in our life over the last eight months, and I talked like this because I had emergency surgery. That's when I have something to drink. Good, that's fine. I have a horrific cough left from it, and it comes on just weep. Yeah. But I'm here because it's something I've always been interested in. I cannot see what a lot of people see, and I want to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hate taking pictures with my phone. Okay. Because there's nothing but your phone. I mean, it's like, here, you want to see my grandkids? You want to do it that way. Right. And there is a lady named Robin out of, I think, in Mount Juliet, who takes senior pictures. Mm -hmm. And she has taken family pictures of my younger daughter with the two little ones. Mm -hmm. And she's taken now both of my grandson's senior pictures. Right. My God, the pictures she takes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Uh huh. And I understand. I think I want. I think I want to do that. Yeah. And the only way to know is you gave me the suggestion of what camera to buy. Right. I bought it. Okay. And then my world kind of fell apart again at the first part of the year. Um, so now is a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. For well, me to it be. is a good time. Yeah. I want to be here. It is a very good time to start. Whether you finish, uh, whether you start and stop. Uh, we do have people who start and stop sometime because 16 weeks is a while. Uh, if you have to take a break, I just had a student that, that, that returned. His uh, grandparent got sick during the last few weeks of the class, and he had to be with his grandmother. And he said, I'll just have to come back. And, and guess what? He came back, and he finished, and he got his certificate. We do, we do take a quiz after the eighth week, we'll have a quiz, and then at the end, we'll have another quiz. Because uh, I like to know that you're learning something. Now, whether you apply what I teach you, that's strictly up to you. I can teach you, but, you know, the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. Well, I can teach you all the principles of basic photography. This is something we're going to talk about tonight is basic photography, photography basics 101. And you already have your form to fill out so 
go ahead and make sure you get that and we'll take that back up now of course uh, one of the things we like to talk about at first is how are we going to uh, accomplish your goals how are we going to accomplish your goals well it's my job to sort of frame put that in a proper frame and context one nobody is going to finish the same way not one of you everybody's got their own place no one comes to the same place at the same time so if you feel like you're behind don't worry the other person will probably get behind too at some point so if you feel like okay I'm not getting this hang just hang around uh, I've been able to teach just about everybody that's come to the class even those they have very little talent whatsoever. They will learn something in the light vision art class. Three key anchor points in photography. The three key anchor points that we have to establish. And we want to make sure that we get them very solid. Now I will tell you something about me. I'm very patient. Very, very, very patient. Very patient. Kids love me. Because I will sit and I'll work with a kid forever. And their parents will say, well, he, he does not. I said, just don't worry. I had a young girl. She was 14-year-old, probably the most talented photographer at that age that I've ever seen. She had an eye. She loved the craft. Her parents had plenty of money. And they were willing to do whatever that she needed. And when she got to be about 15, they asked me, what should we do? And I said, leave her alone. Let her just do what she's doing. She's fine. She don't need my input right now. She needs to just continue to enjoy what she's doing. And eventually, she decided she wanted to go when it was time. She decided that she wanted to be a photojournalist. Uh, she went, and she actually went to college for that. Uh, she got out of college, got a career. Uh, she went to New York City by herself her and some roommates she was living in an apartment with other people that were in the same area of career that she was in she got to New York hated it she grew up on a, on a farm she'd been mama, mama girl and big brothers now she's living in a big city uh, she's given all these responsibilities she called home told her mom her mom said call Al she called me and she said what should I do I said come back home I said look if you're talented enough they will seek you out no matter where you are there are people find out about you I said just come back to Tennessee come back home I said look if the company wants you they will work something out and lo and behold, when she came back, they called her and they said, hey, we want to keep you. Let's work something out where you can work out in the field and you don't have to live in New York. So she traveled the world as a teenager. Went all the way around the world, going, uh, photographing some of the biggest concerts, the bands, the events, all over. And she did that a while, and eventually now she's married and she has children. But she actually got to do something that many of us want to do. Notice that little quote underneath my little light vision art banner. It says, you were born an original. Don't die a copy. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be another person. Don't try to be another photographer. Now, I'm going to give you some names of some really good photographers that I think you should study, that I like, but you may have some of your own. The three key anchor points. One, you need good camera handling techniques. Look, if you can't hold a hammer properly, you can't drive a nail correctly. You may even do more damage than you do good. So good camera handling techniques. You're going to learn how to hold your camera properly and not only that, how your posture and everything else comes into play with that. 
Yes, sir. My wife, late wife, was in a camera shop. Mm -hmm. Picked up a camera, and the guy who owned the shop said, you don't see many people know how to pick up a camera. Right. And that struck me at home. And, I, and most of the time, immediately, I can, uh, if I see one of my students holding the camera incorrectly, I will holler at them or I will say, hey, Bonnie, hold that camera correctly. Because that's a big part of conf your confidence. The fact that people look at you differently as a photographer. Look, what if you, if, what if you were a race car driver and you got in and you didn't have the strap on, didn't have your helmet on, and you're in there going vroom, vroom, vroom. Do you think the other drivers are going to take you serious? No. No, it's a certain way they expect you to act if you're a race car driver or a baseball player or a golfer or whatever you are. The professionals know. And when they look at you, they're going to either take you serious or they're going to say, you know, that person's not that serious because, one, they don't have the strap on correctly. Uh, two, they don't have any lens. Their lenses are dirty. Their camera's not clean. Next, something you may not think is important, but I think so. Proper exposure techniques is another anchor point. Proper exposure techniques. Uh, most photographers today learn their exposure techniques from YouTube. They'll go to YouTube and they'll say, hey, uh, I saw this photographer's pictures and they look sort of like this and sort of like that. How did they do that? And the person on YouTube, trying to sound smart, says, well, what you want to do is, you know that little icon on your camera that looks like the little woman's head? That's the one they probably, that's the extent that most people know about cameras and exposure. But proper exposure techniques is an anchor point. Finally, and something probably in Debbie's wheelhouse and partly in mine because I do write, great storytelling. You have to become a great storyteller if you're going to tell a, a, a photograph, photographic story. Um, example. Let me grab an example just quickly. This image right here is a simple image of uh, automobiles and this, right here in front of the store, matter of fact, in my parking lot. And uh, looks like they're racing. And you can see the person over here, person in there, looks like they're zipping down West Main and just booking it. When actually, they're barely moving. It's rainy and it's very wet. So they wasn't going this fast. So my technique, not only of good exposures, good camera handling techniques, and understanding a technique called panning, I was able to give an illustration of two cars that looked to be in a race. So you're trying to create a story by using your techniques, by telling a story. Now everybody's story is not going to always be perfect, not always the same. So, some of the things you're going to have to pick up on the nuances. For example, Bonnie may be a better storyteller than she thinks she is. Leonard, you may be a better person at technical things because that's your expertise. Details. So, uh, my, uh, my uh, high school electronics teacher i never forget him. He was an old Navy guy. His name was Mr. McQueen. And uh, Mr. McQueen, and you know something? I never did know Mr. McQueen's first name. He never did tell us. Isn't it Steve? That's exactly what I thought. I don't know. But Steve, he, yeah, McQueen. you know what? It wasn't him. Trust me. <laughs> he didn't look nothing like, and he didn't act like Steve McQueen either. Nobody but, acts like Steve McQueen. Yeah, but Mr. McQueen, <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. Mr. McQueen was an old Navy guy, smoked cigarette, the unfiltered cigarettes. Uh, his fingernails were so yellow just from smoking his cigarettes. And he was one of the roughest men I've ever met in my life. And, but he handpicked his students because he was in something called 
or we were in something in terms of a vocational school. So to get in vocational school, you had to sort of be picked to get in there. And he would hand pick his students that he wanted to be in that class. And I was like so happy that he handpicked me. I didn't really want to be in electronics. I wanted to be in computers, but not necessarily in electronics. And uh, he taught a very strange method. He used very odd methods to teach. He loved to teach. He loved to allow you to teach yourself in a lot of ways. Um, he allowed you to make mistakes. He allowed you to get shocked a little bit. <laughs> But one of the things he would tell you, and we never forget it, never forgot it in my life. He said, boys, if y'all listen to me in 30 or 40 years, you'll be able to open up a shop. He said, if y'all will listen to me in 30 or 40 years, y'all will be able to open a shop. Now, how do you think 16, 17, 18-year-old boys think about 40 years from now? I don't. No. So... I, I just thought it was just something corny. And another thing he would do, he would allow you to discipline one another. For example, one of his methods of discipline was, and this was back when they had the old metal chairs, and we had the old metal benches, and <clears throat> you had the workstations. If a student fell asleep during the class... We were allowed to come up with a creative method to wake them. And one of them was charging a capacitor while you were asleep and touch you with it. <laughs> and guess what? You're on that metal table, that metal chair, <laughs> and it would wake you up. So my method of teaching is more about giving you the information allowing you to make some mistakes, and then learning from those mistakes. That's how you learn. You learn by making mistakes. So you were born an original. Don't die a copy, of course. Next, four bullet points about cameras. And we're going to go more into detail once we get into your workbook. But these are things that are going to be subjects that we're going to cover quite often. A camera is a box with a hole in it. A camera is a box with a hole in it. Uh, let me grab a couple out of here. I'll tell y'all a story about this cabinet someday. Um, <clears throat> how it has played a really big role in, in this classroom and the person that, that's on the name plate up there, Mr. Henry Frischeisen, he and I, he, we became very good friends. And I'll tell you about him someday. Camera is a box with a hole in it. Here's a box. This is old brownie camera. Camera. Your grandparents or somebody may have had these. Or, you know, somebody in your family probably had one. And, of course, they would have uh, easily uh, taken this out if I can get it out of here. Take it out of the box. It's just basically a container. Uh, you would have loaded your film in this. And of course, then you would have put it back in the box once you load the film. Lock it so it won't come back apart. And then you would have looked through a viewfinder, lined up your subject, and click the, sh the, the, the shutter. Then you would have advanced it to the next frame until you were done. Then you would have sent the film off somewhere, a, a drugstore or whatnot. Got it developed, and of course, got them back later. Tell you a little bit something about this. This box, and maybe one like it. Hold on just one second. 